Hello everyone, welcome to Creative Girl Vintage. I'm Tammy and thank you for joining me today for a crafting project. In this video, I'm going to be making a peg doll angel. And she kind of takes me back old school here because when I first started crafting, it was all about the unfinished wood. It was all about the paint. And I'll be honest with you, I really haven't painted in a long time. So when I started making her, I just truly enjoyed getting those paints out again. I just had such a great time. And um, peg dolls are nothing new, but um, I decided just to add my own little creative touches to this one. And I also have for you guys, I've put together a little crafting stash bundle here besides a few basic crafting supplies that you probably already have. This is all the little bells and whistles. I got you covered for all that, even the wings, so you can decorate her to look like this. And even if you don't want a stash kit, um, this is this video is also inspiration for you to get out you know, your your peg dolls and your paint and your bits and bobs and make some sweet little angels for the holidays. So let me clear this away. Let me get out the goods and let's get started. All right, let's get started. This video serves as a tutorial for this stash bundle. And as always, I will list all the supplies that I'm using in the description box below this video. Okay, so let's move her aside and open up our kit and get started. Okay, we're going to pull out here our little peg doll first. Pretty things do come in small packages, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, let's get her painted. Grab a paint palette, also known as a paper plate. And the first color I'm going to use here, this is a Delta color, and it's called Rosy Beige. I was just looking for something that I had that was a, a pretty flesh color. And this one is definitely, definitely gets the job done. Okay, so on the peg doll, I'm going to be painting her little neck and head. We're going to do another color for her body, but that's totally up to you. So I noticed here that one coat seems to do the job, which is a good thing. So just thoroughly cover the entire head and neck with a, a flesh color paint. Okay, so you want to let this dry. And um, just for the sake of the video, I have one for us with the head already done. Let me rinse this brush off real quick. And um, the next color I'm going to use for the body is, this is an Americana color, and this is called Sage Mint. I've been obsessed with this color lately, if you haven't noticed. So grab the head, and we're going to paint the body. I'm going to go a little bit slower right around this neck area, just to keep it nice and neat around there. Now this is gonna have a piece of lace that's gonna go around her body as part of her little dress. So um, whatever color you choose for her body is gonna peek through that lace. So whatever you like. This is a pretty color, isn't it? I've always been attracted to this color. When I, when I was a little kid, I can remember, as far back as you know I can remember, um, there was a like a bookcase in my bedroom and it was like an old vintage looking bookcase and you can paint the bottom if you want to too and um, it was this color and ever since then I've always loved this color it might have something to do with that bookcase okay so you want to set this one aside let it dry I have a, a blow dryer an old blow dryer in my craft room that I'll dry things with and it'll, it'll speed up your drying time but for the sake of this video I did have one already done for us, okay? Just so we can not have to waste time watching paint dry, which is really no fun. Okay, so grab a pencil. At this point, I felt like kind of mapping out what you wanna do for her, her face and her hair ahead of time makes it a little easier than just taking your brush and just, you know, 
freestyling it. So for her hair, I liked just some little scallops. So I put like three little scallops here. That'll be kind of the front. And then maybe just make a guide there where, where I want to run this around the back. Okay, this is this is the three little scallops once it's painted. Isn't that cute? And then for her eyes, um, I like these being kind of far apart, but that's kind of up to you. Wherever you want to put them is fine. But I did that, and then I did a little smile. Okay? So just kind of, like I said, just kind of map it out. What you want to do for, for your hair and face. Um, I'm going to grab here. Now, this is just something I keep in my craft room. This is an old compact of blush. It's always been in my craft room. I've always used it for cheeks. And I've got a scruffy little brush here. And I'm going to use this to put cheeks on this little angel. So it's just a little swirl over here. And a little swirl of it over there. You can use a Q-tip to do this as well. And... Um, if you don't have any blush or you don't want to raid your makeup drawer, you can um, draw a little circle with your pencil and fill it in with a pretty little pink paint. I always like this though. I, it's just so, it just adds a nice little touch. All right. Get another paintbrush out here and let's start working on her hair. I'm going to go for the black. Of course, it's up to you. You may be making this as a gift for someone you want to do blonde hair or brown hair or whatever you like purple hair <laughs> okay so just taking my paintbrush I'm just going to carefully just start filling in my little scallops here just going around and like I said I haven't had my paints out for a while and it was very relaxing to paint these little angels. I have to say, really enjoying it. And I'm going to do a lot more painting. Kind of go back to my roots here. I look at her and just see if I kind of have it, her hair balanced out on the sides a little bit. Just play with it. Just have fun. And then I'll just fill in the back of her head here and the top. And that's basically it, you guys. There's some pretty hair. Okay, now, this right here, this is, my dad bought this for me when I first started crafting back in the 80s. This is an artist stylist, metal on each side, and I've always used it to make dots with everything. So um, you can definitely just use a toothpick for this. That toothpick works just, just as fine, just as well. So I'm just gonna put a dot in the black paint and put a dot for an eye. I'm gonna wipe it off so I don't have extra black on there and come back in and do it again, just so my eyes are a little more even. Okay, got the eyes on. Now, this is um, this is magenta, it's a folk art paint. The color is magenta. And um, I don't know if you guys remember this one or not, but remember that box of crayons that had 64 crayons and had a crayon sharpener in the back? Well, that was my favorite thing ever to get when I was a kid. And the magenta crayon, I just used it up. Just used the whole thing up. Love the magenta crayon. I'm going to take a little bitty liner brush, and I'm just going to gently put it in there in the magenta paint and lightly take a little off. And, you know, you can go to your palette and just practice a little thin line. Basically, the key here is you don't want to have a lot of paint globbing the tip of this liner brush. You'll just get a better result. I'm just going to put a little smile right right there in a nice little thin line. Okay? And let me just point out, because, you know, I can't even tell you how many times I've did this. If you do her face and you just don't like it, get a paper towel, wet it, just wipe it all off and clean it really good. Let it dry. Repaint it again with your flesh color paint and start over. Believe me, did it so many times. I can't even tell you. 
okay? So here she is, she's looking good, but there's one more step that can really make her look better. This is the Krylon Crystal Clear, and it's a permanent gloss, and it dries really fast, too. So um, I recommend taking this, putting this on a paper plate, taking it outside, giving her a little spray, letting it dry. Don't You don't want to spray this in the house. It's really stinky. So I have one here sprayed and ready to go, and as you can see, just how that spray enhances everything. The colors are just popping. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so we got her ready. She's all sprayed. She's all dried. Now let's get her dressed. All right, I've taken our little angel wings out of the package. Just going to grab my little cutter bee scissors. We can do a little, a little bit of fussy cutting today. Some of you might um, recognize these floral angel wings here. These are the wings that I designed for the um, cottage butterfly bundle that I made over the summer. I still have butterflies all over my house. <laughs> I tell you, they're just so cute. We made them with old um, dictionary pages for the wings. If you guys missed that video, I'll link that below for you. That was a really fun project. So I'm basically just going to cut our wings out. Super easy. Okay, there's one. Oh, and right here I have, I did Blessed and Grace. I did two of them. So you can pick whatever, whatever one you like. Let's use Grace today. I think that would be, that would be a good one. And then we have a second butterfly here, which is our second wing. And this wing here, I actually scanned this vintage sheet music. Um, it was called Angel of Peace. And then I made the angel wing from it. So this is your little vintage sheet music wing. And see here, we're gonna put them together and give the angel wings a little bit of dimension. Okay. All right, Grace Butterfly. I gotta be careful because you know me, I'm notorious for throwing it all out into the garbage. Dig through the garbage and find everything. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a little piece of paper here. Um, you know how I am about not really wanting to leave the back of these like white paper. I don't know. I just, I just like to take it another step. So I'm just gonna take out my Distress ink here. I think this one's called um, Vintage Photo. And I'm just going to go over the back of these wings. Just give them a little bit of a little bit of a vintage look and take away that plain old white cardstock paper. And I'm going to turn this one over and add a little bit of this Distress ink onto the wing too. I feel like that, that vintage -y color just really changes up the colors in um, on that paper. It looks so pretty. Okay, so then, let me just get this out of our way real quick. I like to take it maybe one more step. Don't have to do this, it's completely optional. But I have this rubber stamp here. It's, it's just like um, handwriting. And let me just ink it up. Right, let's flip these over first. We're going to stamp the back of these. And it makes them look like old paper. All right. This is a pretty stamp. It's big, though. Really big. You can cover a lot of ground with it. Okay. Let's just stamp. And look, isn't that pretty? So... You pretty much take that plain white paper and it looks like it's just actually, you know, some old vintage letter on the back. Isn't that pretty? All right, so I'm going to fold this butterfly just a little bit. Let's fold the sheet music. 
grabbing my glue gun, I'm just gonna put a little bead of glue right here and put this wing on right on the top. And you can see now we have a little, little dimension here. Isn't that pretty? And turning it over, it's just as pretty. That looks so good. Okay, let's just set that aside. Where's our little girl? Okay, here she is. Where is, here we go. I've got stuff all over the place, can't find anything. Okay, here we have a piece of lace. And, um, hold on a second. I actually had the wrong piece of lace <laughs> in my little kit. It was a lace I was gonna start out and then I decided to change my mind and go, go to another one. So this has a really pretty scallop on it, doesn't it? And I like the scallop facing up. So it's kind of like, makes almost like a little collar of a dress, okay? This is super easy. I just take my glue gun and just glue it on the back like so. Okay, cute, right? All right, next. Next we have, now I've been using this in my projects, this furry yarn, and um, I know you guys were liking it, so I thought I'd share and add it into this kit because it just looks so pretty right here on the bottom of the lace, which is her dress. Just gonna lay it on like so, and then go around to the back. Right there. And right there. That's looking good, right? Okay. Next up. This is a very simple little pipe cleaner. One of those little plain pipe cleaners. And I'm going to, I'm just going to cut this in half. Let me just eyeball it. Okay. Taking my little needle nose pliers. I'm just going to bend that up like a little curl right there. Let me put a little curl on this one. That's going to be her little hands. And I'm just going to kind of look and see how long that I want to do my arm. So definitely that needs to be shortened up a little bit. Once again, I'm just kind of doing a little eyeball here. Maybe even just a little shorter. There we go, just like her little arm. And while I'm at it, let me just match it up with this one so they can both be the same size. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna add glue, come right to the top of this arm, holding on to that little that little place we made the little hand. Just gonna put it right there on her dress, like so. Give it a second to dry. Of course we have to we have to have our glue strings, don't we? Let's do the same to this one. Right there on her dress. And at this point, if you want to bend her arms up a little bit, you can. So they're sticking out a little bit like that. I think that looks cute. All right. And there we go. There we go. And right here we have a little, pretty little flower applique. A little hot glue on that. I'm going to put that right up here. You can put it anywhere you like. All right. Now, let's do the wings. So I just sort of eyeball it again and see kind of where I think they look good. And I think that looks great there. Easy peasy, little hot glue. And lay her right on those wings. Let's give her a moment. So everything is sticking. All right. There's a little piece of silver pipe cleaner in your kit. And I'm going to actually just make a little halo out of this. 
by forming it into a little circle. And if you want to, you can put a little dot of glue there on the end, connect that together. Kind of wants to stay together on its own. I don't think it's really going anywhere once you bend it. And the part where it's held together, just kind of place it right where her wing is meeting her head, right there, with a nice dot of glue and halo is in place. All right, see how easy she comes together and she's so special. I mean, she would make a super special gift for someone, wouldn't she? It's around the holidays. Okay, here's our little Grace. And what I didn't do, which I should have done when we had our ink out, is just ink the edges up a little bit. Just give it a little bit of vintagey look. We like that vintagey look. And speaking of vintage, I'm going to put the link to my um, Instagram below. I, every single day, I do a post of something vintage that I've collected, um, or if I've been flea marketing, what I found. And so I've got collections all over my house. So I've been adding a picture every day of something something vintage from around my house. Really cute. And um, you guys can go check it out. And while you're at it, um, tag me with things you're making. I love that. I love to know what you're doing. Okay, so let's put Grace right there. Oh, what a cute little peg doll. Thank you for watching today. This stash bundle is available in my Etsy shop. The link to that is below. And um, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. If you haven't subscribed already, I hope you'll do so. You don't want to miss any new projects coming up. Happy crafting to all of you, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.